Many thanks for joining us. Let's now take a look at the news in detail. President Adam Barrow has on Monday hosted the first ever consultative dialogue with all political party leaders at the State House in Banjul. The event aims to provide the opportunity for participants to make statements and engage in dialogue on important national issues. When this report. This dialogue comes at a critical time for the country as divisions among its citizens continue to deepen. The meeting aims to bridge this gap and restore the unity, peace and security that the Gambia is known for in order to foster development. The opening statement was delivered by John Charles Nyai, a member of the National Preparatory Committee, who described the dialogue as timely and much needed. On this sacred ground of the seat of power, we come together from diverse political persuasions different faiths and ethnic groupings from far and near manifesting in real time the phrase in our national anthem joining our diverse people and proving our brotherhood and our sisterhood this coming together to have an open discourse on what affects us as a nation in spite of our differences, presents us a unique opportunity for togetherness in forging a way forward for our beloved motherland. This consultative forum is a result of last year's public forum held in celebration of the 58th independence, where recommendations were made for a national dialogue in preparation for the 59th commemoration this year. The goal is to encourage reflection and dialogue on important national issues that promote, protect and nurture peace and stability. In his opening remarks, President Adam Barrow emphasized the objectives of the consultative meeting, highlighting his government's commitment to collaboration in maintaining peace and stability for the betterment of the country. I have directed the committee to work on this national consultative forum to encourage and stimulate reflection and dialogue on selected national issues to promote, protect, and nurture peace and stability in our democracy. You may have realized that I have continually called upon my colleagues and fellow Gambians to come together and work in the best interest of the country. We dearly love. It is every citizen's responsibility to contribute towards our overall security, peace, and stability, be it in an official or private capacity, as public servants or bona fide citizens. My government holds the view that we should always try to forge national consensus on national issues that generate divergent views so divergence must not result in enmity or disunity. During the dialogue, all political parties present were given the opportunity to express their views. Some of the key issues raised included the need for better management of state resources, addressing the high cost of living, promoting religious tolerance, ensuring a level playing field for all politicians, enhancing civic education, protecting women, and finding responsive solutions to prevent illegal migration. Today, I believe that at the end of this program, the management of state resources should be a key pillar in the discussion of these things. How do we discuss the issue of the management, physical management of state resources, and how do we manage and discuss the issue of land management and land use in the Gambia? We must accept that the issue of land is becoming a threatening national security issue that need to be discussed by everybody. So that at the end of the day, the government of the Gambia will do what its people want them to do. We all want to lead this country, but to lead a better Gambia. And I believe this is just the beginning, Mr. President. I have been talking about this, and I would not want you to stop here. Let this be a continuous process and to make sure that the whole world will learn from us. We have to develop, we have to have an educational system. There must be institutions of socialization. We must train the people who are to serve as service deliverers. 
the nurses, the teachers, the technicians of all sectors of society. And if we look at our civil service, these are the people who will constitute that service sector. We must train them. We must nurture them. We must nurture sovereign citizens so that we become one. Upholding this, that should be an utmost concern. Many a time, it is our young folks, and I believe the way things are going, we need to put our cultural norms and values to the knowledge of our young people. Honorable, uh, Your Excellency, if you go to our communities, usually we tend to get disputes here and there as a result of land management. We have in place what is called land commission. I'm not sure whether the land commission is functioning. If not, or if so, it is not as expected. If we want to do away with violence in our communities, the issue of the land, the policy around the land should be looked into. Meanwhile, after carefully listening to the concerns and issues raised by the speakers, President Adam Barrow described the occasion as historic, acknowledged their presence, and assured them that steps will be taken to address some of these concerns. We are very happy that all politicians that, that we are invited, they are all here, either through their party leaders or they are represented. So that means it's 100% response. Then this is positive for the government. This is positive for our unity. This is positive, positive, and this can make a big change as far as our political landscape is concerned. On that note, I seize this opportunity to thank all of you for coming. Be assured that all what you have said here is noted. Our technicians are here. It will be noted, and we will dialogue on it and see how best we can put some of your concerns into our policies and make sure that it will benefit the Gambian people because we are all representing the Gambian people. I thank you. This dialogue marks a significant step towards fostering unity, peace and stability in the Gambia. By engaging in open and honest conversations, the government and political party leaders are working together to find common ground and create a more inclusive society. It is hoped that this dialogue will lead to tangible solutions, a stronger and more united Gambia. In addition to today's meeting, another meeting has been scheduled for February 14 to discuss the thematic issues affecting the country. And the final discussion scheduled for February 16 will mark the National Day of Dialogue, providing an opportunity for the nation to come together and address important issues. Maria Madem, reporting for Study News.